What we're alleging is that gain of function research was going on in that lab and NIH funded it. That is you can't not. Get away from it. It meets your definition and you are obfuscating the truth. You are implying that what we did was responsible for the deaths of individual. I totally resent and it could that. Have been. And if anybody and it could is have been. lying here, Senator, it is you. Welcome to another edition of COVID Theater, starring Senator Rand Paul. He clashed yet again today with the nation's top infectious disease expert at a Senate Health Committee hearing, which was held to discuss the federal response to COVID. Once again, Rand Paul went after Dr. Anthony Fauci, accusing him of not only lying about the origins of COVID when Fauci testified back in May, but also of lying about the role the NIH played in funding a controversial type of research at a lab in Wuhan, China. It's a claim Senator Paul has made before and one that Dr. Fauci has denied. But here we are again, and why? Because, let's be honest, this is a manufactured political theater created by Dr. Rand Paul, I say doctor in quotes, to keep Rand Paul in the good graces of those on the right who are not fans of Dr. Fauci. And maybe for Rand Paul, creating all this phony drama at the publicly televised hearing is a better move than addressing the devastating. So let's get to that real news on COVID. The highly contagious Delta variant now accounts for 83% of new cases. And the CDC says the rise in the variant also coincides with the troubling spike they are seeing in cases, hospitalizations, and deaths nationwide. And according to a new Yahoo News poll and YouGov poll, unvaccinated U.S. adults say the vaccine poses a greater health risk to them than the actual virus. Also, a whopping 93% of the unvaccinated, and that's about 73 say they will either never get the vaccine or they will keep waiting to see what happens to others before deciding, or they're just not sure. So we now have a new surge that's primarily caused by those who are unvaccinated and that same large population says it is absolutely nothing that can be done to get them to take this vaccine. So joining me now to discuss is the founder of the National Voter Protection Action Fund, Don Calloway. Don, I have to say, I was just blown away by these numbers, uh, of the number of people who just say the, the vaccine is worse than the virus. And also the people yeah. who just say there's nothing you can do or say well, first, or whatever that's going to get me to take it. Yeah. What, do you ta what do you take away from this poll? Well, first and foremost, shout out to Dr. Fauci. I mean, Brooklyn, stand up. We saw the BK come out in the realest <laughs> way right there in dealing with Dr. Rand Paul. And I'm so glad that you pointed out for our black family to put doctor in quotes. Rand Paul is an ophthalmologist who is a member of a board that is a that, that contains one one doctor and that is him. He self-certified himself. So I'm glad you pointed out that he is a pseudoscientist, he's a pseudo doctor, and he has no business telling America and particularly black people what's good for them when it comes to COVID. Now to your question, I think it's important that we not approach our family as though they are slow, dumb, uninformed, or that they are crazy. It's important that we meet people where they at are they where they are at. And for the last year and a half, we've heard the word Tuskegee more than we've ever heard it. And we know about the Tuskegee experiments, but when we talk Tuskegee in the medical context, what we're really doing is using Tuskegee as a euphemism for a centuries long history of distrust between the medical system and black bodies. We're talking about J. Marion Sims, who literally experimented on black women's bodies in New York State. We're talking about the Mississippi appendectomy, as coined by Fannie Lou Hamer, in which black women were sterilized, and black men as well, intentionally sterilized because state actors decided that we were unfit to breed. We're talking about a North Carolina system of eugenics from 1929 to 1974, in which 10,000 African Americans, who again, state actors simply decided were not fit to breed breed were given were denied their right to try to ever procreate in their entire lifetimes right. 
And finally, we're talking about medical doctors like, like Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. You remember him dressing up as a Klansman, whether or not he admitted it. We're talking about him and his medical cohort, his colleagues, his students, mm -hmm. who were trained under these racist procedures. And you have to meet our people where they are and recognize that we are not crazy, we are not wrong for a fundamental distrust of a medical system which was built on experimentation and abuse of black bodies. So that is a deep mistrust right. there that is so far beyond Tuskegee. So when you talk about that, I still think, and that's why we need people like you to be able to get the message that like our brothers, our sisters, our non-binary family, get the vaccine. It's the safest thing that we can do to protect ourselves right now. We can trust the science because Dr. Kizzy and people like her participated in the development of this vaccine. If we really want to protect black communities and black families, the thing we need to make sure we can do is get the vaccine. And I've taken it. I, I don't know if you've taken it or not, but I have seen enough of us oh, take absolutely. it that I can test it. I was rushing yeah, out yeah, to we, get it. I, I, I wasn't right, even hesitating. Right, because anything else, I wanted to see my family and hug folks again. But I think that enough of us have taken it that we need to testify to our black brothers and sisters that we understand the history, we understand the pain, we acknowledge that it's real. We're not saying that you're crazy. And let's all take it together so we can move on forward. Right, so let's bring in Dr. Corey Abair. Dr. Abair, I wanna get your take on these poll numbers that we saw today uh, where most people who are unvaccinated say that the you know, the virus, the, the, the vaccine is worse than the virus, and 93% of people say that they're either never going to get it, they're waiting to see what happens to other people, or they don't know uh, how to feel about it. How do you take these numbers? Well, these are the numbers that I see. And, and the, the problem is that we have constantly been seeing these numbers. They have not gotten any better. They've actually gotten worse. And when I ask people, I always say, I was in a barbershop this past weekend, right? And I said, look, I mean no disrespect to you, my brother. I just want to hear what you have to say. I want you to tell me vaccine. Never was there a reason that had to do with any health issue. It was, it ranged from uh, they're giving this vaccine away to some people and some people have to pay for it. Or, you know, it hasn't been tested enough. Or it's never that there's a scientific reason. So we're kind of caught up into the lore of we don't really know why we don't want to get it. And that's the thing I want us as black people to do. I want us to look in the mirror and say, why do I truly not want to get it? And obviously, as the brother said before, the history of African-Americans being uh, uh, totally tortured at the hands of doctors throughout time. This is something that has not been unnoticed. But at this point, this is the cautionary tale. Black people are going to die more now. And, they, and, and you have to really hear this. As black people are starting to uh, uh, see other black people die, that's the thing that's making people flip a little bit. Because if black people now don't get the vaccine, right, what's going to happen is that once these boosters come out, because they are going to come out, once these boosters come out, then the black people will not be able to get the third dose because they didn't get the first or the second one. So as the Delta variant starts to ravage and the Lambda variant starts to ravage to everyone, then those people that can get the booster to make them feel better and to make them actually be protected, they won't be black people. And then the only people that are going to be covering the deaths of black and brown and poor people is black news channel because those are the ones that are going these are the people that are going to die, and then we're going to lose our culture, and that's what we cannot have. So, in, in my opinion, right now, I mean, Charles, you know, I've said I, they call me Negro Domus around here because I have said everything I said has happened. I mean, even the CDC now is saying all the children have to go back to mass in school. LA is flipping back, every place is flipping back because we said here. You, we're never not gonna have, we're not gonna be away from masks in the next two months. It's crazy. You can't say Montana and Manhattan can have the same rules. That's just not the way it works. So black people, I'm telling you, we have got to stick together on this. You got to trust the people that have been boots on the ground for you for 25 years. That have gotten you through Zika, right. H1N1, Ebola, and everything else. We have to stick together now and make this happen. So, so Don, I, I mean, I want to go back to your point that you made about, uh, you know, all of the. The horrible things that have happened in history and how we have to take that into account when we're talking to people uh, and trying to convince them to get the, the, the vaccine. You know, I said this last night and I, I just honestly believe it's true. We're not telling people not to stop fighting the power. 
We understand right. that the power still needs to be fought. It's that that you just can't fight it when you're in a hospital bed on a ventilator. Exactly. We need you to be healthy enough to fight the power. So, so how do we yeah. thread that needle and get well, that message across? Well, Char Charles, what I'll tell you is that, I mean, we literally, a, a black man, an African named Onesimus invented vaccination in this country. Tell him, brother. I mean, we, we have all the data points to show that we invented this. If we can embrace that and say, we brought vaccination here from the motherland, and the reason why, it, we just have to empower us to know that we have to trust our own. It's consistent. Your, your, your response, how do we, how do, we do this? It's consistency, and we can't give up. I mean, you know, I, I have heard the worst of the worst. Listen, we've all sat in the barber shops and we've sat on the basketball courts and heard the craziest of conspiracy theories, but we're still our brothers. We have to meet our people where we are and where they are with love and with compassion. And again, I think the worst thing that, it, first of all, uh, do not do uh, my. But be not weary in well-doing. You cannot get tired of saying the same thing over and over because if you say it on the 99 time, the 100th time might be the time that saves a life or, or, or allows right. us to get together at the barbecue. I want to hear Frankie and Beverly and Mays one more again, and I hope that everybody else does too. So we are to, we are to, to faint not, first of all, in delivering this message. And second of all, I think it's just the, the message has to continue to be delivered with compassion and love and, and, and with the idea that we are family. I think it's entirely wrong, and, I, and I'm guilty of it uh, often, the East Coast bias, the hyper-educated bias that we often have. Right. Uh, we look down on our brothers and sisters in the South and in the flyover states, and we approach them as though they're somehow right. backwater or down. That's not the case. We have to, that cannot be the case if we are going to be serious right. about getting this message across. I'm being we told we to, have to go, Don. I'm being told. We, I'm done. I'm being told we have to okay. go. I'm sure that oh, the, the, that South Carolina State is a wonderful school, but Don Calloway wore that, that sweatshirt on here just made me upset. I told him what to wear when he come on this show, and he didn't do it. And Dr. Corey Abair made news tonight. He let us know that he goes to a barber shop and not a salon to get his baby hair slicked down. Thank you, don't, Dr. Corey don't Abair. Make me come, don't make me come over I there. Don't it. make me come over there, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Our